Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys my tips for growing in your relationship with God. I think it's so important to really build that relationship and focus on it. So I wanted to share a little bit of tips with you guys. My first tip is to really just put God first. You know, I feel like sometimes you can really kind of you know, focus on so many different things. Like, okay, I got to do this to get closer to God. I need to go there to get closer to God. I need to give this to get closer to God. But really, it just comes down to putting God first. Like, make God first in your life. Make him Lord of your life. Make him the God of your life. And really try to put no idols before him. So in Mark chapter 12, verse 29 and 30, a religious teacher came to Jesus and asked him, what's the most important commandment? You know, they would try and kind of put him on the spot and ask him those questions in public. But Jesus always knew and he was always right because he really didn't play about his business. So Jesus, it says that Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. So... It's very simple. The most important commandment is to love God with your all. So I think that some, so many times we can get caught up in just loving God with part of our lives and part of ourselves, but literally like all of our strength. And I think that no matter where you are in your walk with Christ, that we can all focus on giving God more of our all. Um, so that goes right into my second tip, which is, you know, so first I said love God, but the second tip is to love others and, uh, you know, people can be difficult to work with people can be imperfect and people can get on our nerves and frustrate us and make us upset and hurt our feelings but at the end of the day those people are still children of god just as much as we are and i think that so much in the faith we it can become a us versus them sort of thing when it comes to non-believers but we are supposed to love everybody we are god's children and we're supposed to act accordingly we're supposed to act lovingly also like right after jesus told the religious teacher to love god he also told him to love others so he said love others the second is equally important love your neighbor as yourself no other commandment is greater than thee the religious teacher asked jesus what his most important commandment was and i'm sorry y'all if you can hear some um you know, some lawn people in the back, they're mowing the lawn outside of where I live and I can't really control it, but God gave me this word, so I'm gonna deliver it. But anyway, so the religious teacher asked him, put him on the spot and said, what's the most important commandment? And Jesus responded and said, well, this is important, love God, but also love each other. And guess what? They're both they're both equally important. I want us to keep that in mind when we're interacting with people day to day, when we get frustrated, when people get on our nerves. Like they're just as important. Us loving them is just as important as us loving God and maintaining right relationship with him. It's so important. So we should never become super mad with anyone else or super angry or upset or harbor those feelings. And I have videos about anger below, which will be linked in the description box but so important to just love each other the faith in christianity is not just like a like just commercial love like oh i love you i love you kisses hugs roses no it's agape love it's loving somebody despite what they've done it's loving somebody despite how they've offended you it's loving somebody not based on how they treat us but based on who god has called and created us to be it's agape love and agape love is best um, described in the way that God loves us. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, to give us a fresh start, to give us a choice, to give us a choice between life and death, a choice between you know sin and righteousness. He gave us a choice and we have free will. And agape love is the fact that God that God loves us despite our sins, despite what we've done. He's still there. He's still, he's still receptive. He still wants a relationship with us. And that's agape love. And that's what we want to have towards other people. It's not saying romance, you know, but it's just loving people and being kind. And that's a choice. We have a choice to be kind or to be mean and bitter and get back at people. But the Bible says that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So don't bother yourself with that. The Bible tells us to love each other. And that's all we're supposed to do. So my next tip is to de devote some time in the morning to just spend some time alone with Jesus, spend some time alone with God, spend some time alone with the Holy Spirit, and really just seek communion with 
you know, God in the morning is so important. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, the New International Version, it says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. So it just speaks to the importance of getting up in the morning before your day started, before you're overwhelmed with this world and the problems of this world and what's going on at your job and what's going on with your family. Wake up before everybody else and have that time with God. That's the expectation for us. And trust me, I don't always get it right. There's times where, oh, I choose to leave. There's times where mm, I can just do it in my bed. But I think it's so important that the Bible is saying he got up. He got out of bed, got out of where he was sleeping, he left the house. How uncomfortable would that make you to get up and leave the house when it's still dark out? When it's still dark out, we be trying to get more sleep. We even put on sleep masks um, to make sure that we were not interrupted. We, we use darkening blinds to make sure that we can sleep. But Jesus got up while it was still dark, hopped out the bed, left the house, and went to a solitary place to pray. And I think that that's so important to speak so much volume because we can take time to pray all throughout the day and it's still important, but there's something so powerful about making it first, putting God first at the beginning of our day and allowing him to speak to us and breathe into us before the world um, and the enemy has a chance to do so. So a great way to get close to God is just make some time to devote to him every single morning or at least try to. My next tip is to learn about Jesus so you can be more like Jesus. I got to a point a few months ago when I was just like, I felt kind of like a, I was at a dead end in my in my walk. I didn't know where I was going, didn't know what I was doing, didn't really know what my purpose was. I got very lukewarm in my walk. I felt like God was telling me, that's because you don't know a whole lot about Jesus. And Jesus is really so important in the Trinity. We have God, we have the Holy Spirit, and we have Jesus. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit are both uh, God in different in different forms and different capacities. But there's something important to learn about Jesus. Jesus was God in the flesh, in the form of a son, walking through the earth. He was tempted. The Bible said that he was tempted in, in every way, yet he did not sin. And he lived to be in his mid-30s, and he did not sin. So I feel like if, if you want to grow closer in your relationship with God, you want to know, how do I make it through this world and not be overcome by the devil and not be dragged down by sin? The answer is to learn about Jesus. Learn how he walked. Like I said in the last point, he woke up super, super early. And I learned that because I started to study Jesus. And what I did was I started a, a daily devotional on the Bible app, which is a version Bible app. And on that app, there's Bible plans you can do. So I clicked a Bible plan, which is a 90 day plan that takes me through the gospel. First I was going through Matthew and now I'm in Mark and I've learned so much about Jesus. And I kind of have a better understanding of the expectation for me from God. It's so important to take some time and study the gospel for yourself. We hear so much from different preachers and different pastors but it's so important to learn for yourself and study it and let God speak to you through his word it's important to take that time so if you haven't already make sure to carve out some time and just read through Matthew Mark Luke and John and I will link below the Bible plan that I'm going through and it has made such a huge difference so I would highly recommend it for you guys um, and it's also free just letting you guys know so my last tip for you is to just be patient with yourself and know that it is a journey. Just know that it's a lifelong journey and it's going to take time, but you are on the right track. You watched through this entire video and you are wanting to grow in your relationship with God. Like just know it's going to take time and give yourself some grace. Um, just keep at it. Keep trying to grow. Keep being intentional and God will really, you know, honor you for that. And the last scripture I want to share with you guys is from Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13 and 14 it says you can enter god's kingdom only through the narrow gate the highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way but the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it so if you're in your walk with god right now and life has been difficult and it has been hard and you feel like you're kind of losing friends and you're just walking this thing by yourself be encouraged. The, the path to hell is wide. And, and it says that many people choose that way. But you have found the way. You found the way to, to make it to heaven. And it's a, it's, a, it's a journey. It's a race. 
it takes time it takes a whole lifetime but it's so worth it so i just want to encourage you that if you're going through anything difficult right now just be encouraged the bible says that it's going to be difficult but take heart growing a relationship with christ will help you to walk it out jesus did not have a perfect life on earth like he was actually killed and hung on the cross and you know by being a christian we're gonna deal with some hardship as well but keep on the right path and i'm proud of you whatever you're doing wherever you are you know and god god knows your heart and he knows what you're going through and but yeah just continue to grow closer to god and he will keep you throughout every step of your journey that concludes all of my tips for you guys. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. Make sure to share it with somebody who you think could benefit from this message. Like it, subscribe. Down below, comment what you do to grow closer to God. Just what you really focus on, what you're doing in this period of your life to grow closer to God. And I just hope that it encourages people who are reading through the comments to see, you know, what the brothers and sisters in Christ are doing. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!